In today's video, we're gonna make a two color checkered mug rug. So let's get started. In this video, we'll be using our 100% recycled mini loom. You can get it in black or white and it comes with a comb and two needles. Other tools from our spruce and linen shop include 8-8 warp string and our wood tapestry needle. All the links will be in the description box below. Pattern for this piece is super simple, but if you do prefer to follow an actual pattern, we do have a free PDF available. To start this weaving, I used 8-8 cotton to double warp my loom with 32 warp strings total. Now that I'm at the end, you can see that I already have one string on this last notch, but I'm gonna put this one here as well and just tie it off there. Next, I'm going to tape down my loom so it doesn't shift on me while I weave. For this project, you're gonna need two different colors of worsted weight cotton yarn. I'm gonna be using this green and off-white. Before I do the base work for this mug rug, I'm going to weave in a little piece of cardstock just so I have something to beat down onto. I'm weaving this in just with a plain weave, but I'm using two strings at a time. So I'm going under two, over two, all the way across. Next, I'm taking my off-white color, which happens to match my warp string, and I'm going to do the base work for this piece, which includes a twining stitch and three rows of plain weave, over one, under one. Now we're ready to get started with weaving the pattern. So I'm gonna bring this pattern out and I'm going to get a nice long strand of my green as well. So I have one tapestry needle for my off-white and I'm gonna have another tapestry needle for my green. So I like to work with about three arms length max at a time, even this is quite a bit, but I find it to still be manageable. This pattern is super simple, but we do need to weave two colors in one row. So we're gonna just go ahead and cover up all the other rows and just focus on this one. So we're going to take our green and the green blocks on the pattern will represent going over a warp string and the beige ones will represent going under a warp string. So you can see that the whole way across is just weaving over two, under two. So we'll do this first row, over two, under two, over two, under two, all the way across the loom. We're gonna create that arch. You can give your warp a little bit of a strum and then push down that weft. Then we're gonna take our other color. So whether that's a beige or in my case, an off white, doesn't matter. Now we need to weave this in the opposite of where this went. So you can see that the beige rows are in between. When we're weaving with our second color, the green blocks represent going under warp strings and the beige represent going over. So just remember that whatever color you're using, this, the matching color on the pattern means go over those ones and under the other color. So for this one, we need to go under the first two warp strings. Now that's kind of a challenge because this string is coming under this warp string already. So we're gonna loop it around this green that we just wove in. So I'm leaving this tail out to the side and I'm just gonna go around it. So now I'm going under two, over two, under two, over two, all the way across. And you can hold on to this green string here and you'll see how it just sort of loops onto that. Create an arch, strum your warp, and then beat that down. This is gonna be one where you wanna beat down quite firmly. Don't ream on it and get it too overcrowded, but we definitely want our rows to sit nice and snug. So now that we've woven the first row, we can move up to the second, which is exactly the same, but we're coming from the other direction. So for this one, I need to go under two, over two with my green. Since this one is already coming under, I can't just go under again. I need to loop it around this string. So I'm gonna put that out straight, and then I'm gonna go under two, over two. I'm holding onto this white string this time to make sure it loops around nicely. And you wanna pay really close attention to these edge warp strings trying not to let them get sucked in too much at the sides. Create an arch, give it a strum, beat the row down. And then we go back in with the white and this goes in between. So now we're going over two, under two with our, in my case, off white. So again, weaving in between where we just wove the green. So now we're done the second row and the third row is exactly the same. So grabbing my green again, I'm once again needing to loop around this string. So I need to kind of go underneath it in this case and go over under, always weaving around groupings of two in this pattern. 
So this is much like a pick and pick, only typically with a pick and pick, you're going over one string, under one string. This is the same thing as that, but we're just doing it in groups of two. So I'm gonna follow back with my off-white. Then we're gonna be switching the order of the colors so that we get that checkered pattern. So you'll see that the off-white that we just wove in and the green that we're now gonna be starting with are the same row and that's okay. So even though we just wove in an over, under, over, under, we're doing the same thing. So you'll see when I weave in this row, over two, under two, it's not gonna be like a plain weave where you just wove in the opposite of the previous row. We weave this in and it's the exact same as the previous white row. And now the off white goes in between that. So now we're staggering the colors to get that checkered pattern. It's under two, over two, under two, over two, all the way across. And then when you get this edge, you can sort of shift around the strings to sit a little bit nicer. So we can kind of bring the green up to the surface more and then beat that down. You'll notice that because we did two rows of the same, there is a little bit of a gap but once we weave a little bit further, it's gonna compress pretty nicely and be less noticeable. So just like the first section, we're going green, white, green, white, green, white, and then we're just staggering where the colors are placed and doing that again. So you're just gonna be going from one section to the next section and then back, and that gives us the checker pattern. So here on the edge, since I need to go underneath these strings, I'm gonna loop it around the white one and then go back in with the white after. So now that I've completed the second section, I can go back to the first section again. So just like switching the order of the colors between the first section and the second section, it's gonna be the same when you go from the second to the first. So we're starting with weaving the exact same as that last white row and then going in with the white on top of that opposite of the green. So now all you have to do is keep weaving that over and over again until your mug rug is the length that you want it. Now that I've basically run out of the off-white yarn, I'm gonna cut this tail just a little bit shorter so it's a bit out of the way. And I will go ahead and tuck this back behind the piece to be tucked in to the weaving later. Then I'm gonna grab another piece of off-white and I'm just gonna continue on weaving. So I'm gonna start on the under and then go over just like the previous row of white that I happened to be on. And I can just leave this tail here to be tucked into the back once it's finished. I wove the pattern for about four and a half inches and then I ended this the same way that I started it. I did three rows of plain weave followed by a twining stitch. Then I flipped it over, brought all the ends to the back and used a small metal yarn needle to tuck in all the ends. All right, we're ready to get this off the loom. So we're gonna just cut it right off. The warp string is gonna act as our little mug rug fringe. On this end where I had my cardstock woven in, it was an inch and a quarter wide. I'm going to just use the loom itself as my straight edge. So I'm going to rest my scissors against the edge of the loom and just carefully cut that, holding it down with my left hand. And then I'm not gonna take it off the loom yet I'm gonna go to this end. I'm gonna pull it taut and cut another straight line. On this end, if you like, you can draw yourself a straight line using a water soluble marker or just a plain permanent marker. Just make sure that you cut all those marks off. I'm just gonna go ahead and eyeball this and I can even it out later if it's necessary. But I know I can get it pretty close. Now that it's off the loom, I'm using a small rope brush to brush out the fringe so that it's a little bit more fluffy and it's no longer really twisted up anymore. After brushing out the fringe, you might find that there's a lot of floof coming towards the edges. So I just go ahead with my scissors and carefully just trim that off to make it cleaner. The mug rug is finished. Let's have a look at the final piece. I love the way this cute little mug rug turned out. And if you wanna learn how to make more mug rugs, check out this playlist.